My name is Joshua Avrahamirani. When I was young, I was um, less than 11, my grandfather on my mom's side died. He was very important to me, and he was always a champion for social equality. He always fought for what he believed. My grandmother in the past few weeks has joined him. She is no longer with us, but she too was a champion for everything that she felt was right. She um, participated in the first gay rights march in Washington, D.C. She was a powerful woman, and I know she'd want me here today to talk about this issue. In our schools, I believe that a teacher's job is not to tell me what my morals are supposed to be. A teacher's job is not to tell me what I should think or where I should be on the political spectrum. I go to math class to learn calculus, not to learn why it's wrong to be on a conservative. I go to history to understand the intricacies of the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression. I do not go to understand why my people, the Jewish people, are committing genocide in Israel. And I'm not going to exaggerate people tell that to me. So this relates to Newton South and Newton North in the following ways. They used a map sent out by the PLO without citing it. Do I believe it's wrong to use these sources? Yes, I do. Because they're not made by unbiased sources like the UN. Using these things as fact is lying to your students. And while lying is definitely terrible, I don't believe anyone should be punished, but I would like to know, specifically from um, Mr. Fleischman, I'd like to know what is being done, what concrete steps are being taken to make sure that bias like this is not forced on students again. There's no rep response. No response? Level. All right, sorry. Um, I guess I'll finish off with doing things like showing a video with people acting to, as Jews making Palestinians do death march in a Muslim day. Not okay. 30 seconds. I'd like to say that using sources such as the Hamas constitution but edited so it takes out all the genocide parts. Not okay. I'd like to say that I'm a South student. I've seen this. I feel it every day. As a Jew and just as a teenager in general, I completely disagree with everything going on, with the lack of action. And I think as people who have... Your time's up. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Joseph Razmat. Um, I'm a junior at Newton South High School. Um, when I served on Ruth Ann Fuller's campaign for mayor, I was promised more transparency in both the curriculum and the workings of our local government. Yet, the fact that I stand here today proves the promise wrong. More specifically, our school council has failed in its job to, job to protect students against bigotry and false narratives. Examples are abundant. We use textbooks funded by the Saudi government that not only claim Israelis like my family and my friends are torturing and murdering innocent Palestinian women, but also spread lies about Arab sailors being the first to discover the New World. While a school committee previously claimed that these books, along with other forms of anti-Israel media, had been removed from the curriculum, the fact is they were later found being used in Ms. Castle's 10th grade history class, and the lack of transparency on the district's part has led to students like myself not knowing what's going on in my own school. It is extremely important to discuss conflicts as complex as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. At the same time, a discussion of something as challenging and multifaceted as this issue requires more than one viewpoint. Showing films created by the editor of the Electronic Antifada, which depict Israeli soldiers attacking innocent Palestinian children, and labeling it as a fact is an exact violation of that very transparency and freedom of expression that New and Public Schools has promised me. With that in mind, I have three questions for the school committee. I know you guys don't like to answer them, so you can write them down in your own time to think about them. Ms. Goldman, at what point was it made apparent to the school committee and to yourself that the books are being printed by publishers funded solely by dictators and oil companies in the Middle East? You can write that down for yourself and think about it. Uh, Mr. Fleischman, what steps were taken by administration to remove those books from our schools so that no teacher can use them the next year, like Ms. Castle could, or Dr. Oaken could? 
Mr. Fleischman, what concrete changes have been made in terms of policy for vetting materials so this never happens again? How come that this can't happen next time? How can another book not make it to our schools funded by the Qatar government, Saudi Arabia's government, Saudi Arabia's oil arm, Aramco, and then also Sheikh Zayed of the United Arab Emirates? That's all I have for you. Thank you.